Okay, so if you want to switch off your cameras. Yeah, it's going. Okay. It's on. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Vera. And hello again to everyone. Hello from um, Prague Czech Republic and welcome to the webinar all you need to know about the Phenology Autumn campaign. Uh, my name is Lenka Klege and I am the one that uh, you will be meeting throughout the whole autumn. I will be sending you information about the campaign and also I will introduce the campaign today. Uh, I, I work for uh, the GLOBE Regional Coordination Office for Europe and Euro-Asia and uh, we coordinate this campaign together with my colleagues Bára Semerákova, who uh, you have already seen, the one that helped us to, to run this meeting, and with that, <laughs> Dana Votápková, <laughs> who just <laughs> says hi here from the chair <laughs> next to me, so hello from all our office. And I have the pleasure to welcome also Pavel Broža, who is a teacher from a primary school Manesova Otrokovice from the Czech Republic. And Pavel has a really long experience with phenology and also with participation in the campaign. So he will uh, give us a presentation about his experience in the campaign and about his cooperation with uh, another school. Uh, I'm also very happy to have here uh, Brian Campbell, uh, who is a lead of Trees Around the Globe campaign and also a uh, NASA education specialist. Uh, hello, Brian. Hi. And uh, he's going to talk about the Trees Around the Globe campaign and also explain uh, why and how the two campaigns are getting together and cooperating uh, during this autumn. Uh, another person that, that will talk today and that I'm really happy that is here is Peter Nelson. Um, Peter had to get up at uh, five o'clock because of us today. <laughs> so uh, many thanks for doing that, Peter. And uh, Peter is a scientist from Oregon State University, and he will talk about uh, watching uh, phenology from from above, from uh, with online tools uh, that uh, that uh, can show us uh, phenology changes from from uh, space. Okay, so many welcome to all of you and. Um, I was talking a lot, so I would like to ask you if you would like to say something, introduce yourself, or maybe tell us uh, what your expectations from the webinar or from the campaign are. Is there someone that would like to talk to us? You can also write uh, to chat if you feel like. If you want to talk, don't forget that your microphone is muted, so you have to unmute it first. I know that many of you have already participated in the campaign, but there are also many new faces, so uh, maybe for you it will be interesting to tell us what, what you want to know. Okay, I don't mind jumping in. I'm Jan Heiderer from the Globe Implementation Office in Boulder. And I learned about your meeting uh, from Brian this week and when I was talking to him on the phone. And I'm here because I, well, for one thing, I appreciate being here. It's, it's actually great to be here and to feel like a part of this bigger community. Um, my ambition here is really to, well, threefold. One, to find out more about the phenology uh, campaign in Europe as we as we write about it at the Globe, uh, in the Globe News and at the, on the Globe website. Uh, to, to ask you to send us, send me, I'll put my uh, uh, email in the chat box, images throughout the campaign. We're struggling a little bit now at the Globe office to have images for anything because people are not, you know, well here we're, we're mostly not in school still. And, um, uh, we need, well, we would like to have fresh images constantly on the website. And so if your students are outside uh, and uh, regardless of whether they're in groups or individually, uh, we would appreciate some images sent to us. And then thirdly, we are planning to be doing a video throughout the coming year using footage sourced locally from all of you um, 
to it's an a f film it's we haven't really uh put it out there a whole lot yet but we're starting to explore the idea of doing a film in the coming year that will capture the impact of globe throughout uh this pandemic period so um you'll be hearing more from me about that but it's really the images i'm after at this point in time so thank you very much for sending me any you might have thank you jen thank you for uh talking to us and uh about the picture yeah it's it's um I, um, invitation to all of us to do, uh, to mm -hmm. do it. but um, yeah, I sure can can send you a picture from the campaign. I will have it in my mind, and also yeah. there's a very nice source of actual images, and it's the discussion forum of the campaign that I will be talking about uh, later on. Oh my goodness, what happened? Okay, so it is is there someone more that would like to say something? Uh, if not, then I will start with my presentation where I will introduce um, the, the campaign and the campaign information or activities. So I'm starting to Can you can you see see it now, please? Can, yes. Okay. Yep. Um, this is actually the fifth autumn campaign, uh, fifth autumn uh, technology campaign here uh, running right now, and we have uh, we have uh, almost hundred schools registered right now, and more schools are registering. So just to to say how how big, how big the campaign is. I can't um, turn on the whole. Okay, now it's working. Yeah. Uh, so the campaign actually starts these days uh, and it runs through the whole autumn uh, until December, which is the official uh, date, let's say. But what is important for all of you schools involved in the campaign is not so much the date that we say here but the timing of your of your uh, autumn change of your tree. So the time when, when the leaves on your tree start uh, changing color and um, until they ch keep changing color until they fall off. This is the time when you will be actually, will be very uh, important for you to actually be in the campaign and do the activities. Um, it, it very much differs throughout the Europe, so maybe for some of you uh, the change has already started and uh, in some of your schools it's, it's uh, still uh, coming in, in a few weeks. Uh, we, we ask everyone in the campaign to register. It, the, the reason for the registration is that uh, we want to be able to contact you and to send you information about what's going in the campaign, uh, invitation to webinars and so on. Uh, the, you can register through a registration form that you will find on the campaign website. You can see here a print screen of the website where with a circled registration form. So it's easy, just go there, click, and, and uh, we ask you just a few information. Or you can also email uh, to me. I know that most of you have done it already, but uh, some of you not. So. Uh, Please, if you want to join the campaign, uh, do the registration, it's, it's important. On the other hand, the registration doesn't oblige you to do anything. We will just send you information. We will ask you to do some things, but nothing, none of these tasks are, or activities are obligatory. So if you, uh, during autumn, find out that uh, it's not possible for you to follow the activities, um, there's no punishment <laughs> for it. It's okay, it's not a problem. Uh, we will also uh, send you a newsletter with information, as I mentioned. You can see first newsletter here, and if you registered, you probably received this newsletter. If if not, please let me know. And another thing why a registration is important is uh, issuing a certificate of appreciation. This certificate goes to everyone who is registered and who does uh, at least some activities, follows the follow the activities of the campaign. So you will receive such certificate uh, after the campaign ends. 
uh, what is very important part of the campaign newsletter and the information that you will get are three activities that will actually guide you throughout the autumn observation. Uh, the activities are based on GLOBE protocols, so you will get there the, the core of the GLOBE protocols. It, it's very simplified GLOBE protocol. And uh, these activities will be sent to you one by one as the autumn continues. But in case that you want to find, see them now, find them now, you can go to the campaign website, go to the download materials tab, and uh, you can find all three activities there and download them. So it might be useful for you in case that uh, your color uh, change of leaves is, is already like, uh, quite, quite far. So you want to start, for example, uh, uploading the data, so you can find everything here. Uh, I will just briefly describe all the activities. So the, in the activity one, we will ask you to find and describe your tree. Uh, I guess most of you have already uh, done that, that you know which tree more or less you want to observe. So uh, you have half of the activity done, but we will also ask you to find out which uh, genus and species your tree is and also write down the co GPS coordinates of your trees. Yeah, tree, you will, you will need them uh, later on when you will uh, decide to enter the data. Uh, part of activity one is also a new voluntary activity uh, that is focused on measuring the tree height. It's part of the cooperation with a, a Trees Around the Globe campaign. And uh, so Brian will talk more about measuring tree height and all, about all this topic. Uh, I just will say you shortly that you will uh, uh, learn how to work with clinometer and also you will have the opportunity to try Globe Observer application. Uh, the following activity, activity uh, number two is, uh, two is actually the longest part of the campaign. Uh, we will first ask you to choose four uh, leaves on, on one branch on your tree and mark them somehow so that you can find them every time you come to your tree. So put some ribbon or uh, something like that. And then you will be asked to visit your tree regularly, ideally at least twice a week, and uh, observe how the trees are changing and when they start falling down. Uh, what you will need for this activity is uh, the uh, Globe Plant Color Guide, which is the colorful uh, thing that you see in the, in the picture on the right. And uh, yeah, this is used exactly as, as you can see in the picture. You take your leaf, compare it to the, to the colors in the Plant Color Guide, and you will write down uh, the code of, of the color uh, that is the most uh, similar to your, to your leaf. You can see the codes, hopefully, uh, below the color squares. Uh, all this information uh, you can write down to a green down data sheet. This is the table that you can see also on the slide and uh, it, it helps you to record the, the data and to record the change. When, when your uh, trees uh, leaves uh, change color and fall down, there will be time for actually sharing the results of your research, sharing your data. And you, you will be able to share the data with another school, but also with scientists. And you can do it through entering the data into the GLOBE database. It is something that uh, schools uh, worries very often. It, it uh, might seem very complicated from the uh, first look, but actually it, it's not so. Please do not worry about it. Uh, you will need to have your GLOBE program account, sign to your GLOBE program, program account, and then uh, you will need to create a new phenology sign, site and add there your tree. Uh, all these steps uh, will be explained in a webinar that we plan on October 19. Uh, Bahara will be a lead of this webinar and she will explain you all details about this step by step. Uh, if you would like to start entering data now or create a phenology site now, you can also go to the Phenology Campaign website and there, there you will find a recording of a data entry webinar from uh, 
last autumn. So you can also follow that one or you can download the activity tree and you will find their uh, guide, um, like a written guide to, to entering data. So you will get a lot of information about us and you can always write or um, ask us uh, any details that you need to know about it. Uh, on this slide, you can also see the colorful chart and this is the uh, outcome of the GLOBE database. You can do such a beautiful graphs from, from your observation. You can easily export it from the system and share it with other schools. This is another benefit of entering the data and importance of entering the data that uh, you, can, you can share your data with some other schools, but you can also see data from any other school that is, that is uh, doing phenology observation. So you can use them, for example, for your research. Uh, there are two things that we will ask you to do throughout the whole campaign. And one of them is using Grow Up application. Uh, Grow Up application is, is a very simple mobile phone application that allows you to take pictures with your mobile phone and it automatically changes the pictures into the time-lapse animation or time-lapse video. So uh, in a very easy way, you, you will be able to see the progress of, of the change of your tree in, in your mobile phone. And uh, the video is uh, placed in the map, in, to, it's attached to the place where you are taking the picture. So it's, it's very simple. You don't have to do it manually, it's automatic. When, then you can open the map and see your animation or see animations of people who are observing trees around you or in other parts of Europe. I often get the questions if this uh, Grow Up application is somehow connected to uh, Globe database or Globe website. So the question is, uh, the answer is no, it's, it's not connected. It's two different things. Um, maybe in the future it will be somehow uh, related or connected, but right now it's two different things. So it's important to have it in mind that if you take pictures with Grow Up, it doesn't automatically add the data to the Globe database or uh, the other way around. Uh, one more thing, if when, when you use uh, Grow Up and you want to describe what tree you observe and what your school name is, you will use hashtags that you will just write down when taking the pictures. It's very, uh, it's really very easy to use and actually it's one of the very favorite activities of students. I, I get a lot of feedback from schools that students really enjoy working with uh, new technologies and they really like this application. Uh, one more thing that we will ask you throughout the whole campaign is, is to contribute to the discussion forum. So uh, it's the place where you can uh, share your pictures, share the results of your observation or ask questions to all the community. Uh, or, Everything that you contribute to the discussion forum will be, um, yeah, of course, shown on the discussion forum, but also sent by email to all the, the forum members. So if you write there, everyone who's a member of the Phenology Campaign community will uh, get, uh, get your comments or your posts. It's also quite easy to use. You, you will just need to sign into your GLOBE account and you will need to become a member of the campaign community, which you can do through the Phenology campaign website. You just go to the community tab and uh, you will see there a button join community, which here <laughs> the, the circle one is leave community. It's because I already am a member of a community. So at this place, you will have a join community. You click it and then you can immediately start posting. So it's nothing mm -hmm. difficult. Uh, uh, next thing that I would like to mention and I would like to invite you to is a collaboration group of the Phenology campaign. Uh, collaboration group is something like extra in the campaign. So it's not, if, if you register for the campaign, you are not automatically a member of the collaboration group. Uh, if you have already done the registration, you, you would see there a question, do you want to join the group or not? If you click the yes, you will soon uh, receive from me an email 
with information about your partner of school. If you uh, didn't uh, sign or you haven't registered, you can still do it or you can write me an email that you would like to join. We have now about 70 schools joining the collaboration group. And actually the way how, how the collaboration group works is, is that we help schools to, to create uh, international groups of two, three or maximum four schools and encourage the groups to work together a little bit closer. So to exchange data, to send each other emails with pictures, with results, but also possibly to, to plan some Zoom, Skype or phone meeting so that uh, students can practice their English, can, can uh, try talking in other language. And uh, you can also try to plan some research project together. Pavel Broja will soon talk about one such research project that they have done uh, with a partner school from Poland. So you will uh, learn more about how it works. Okay, and I will, I will try to change. Uh, I would like to tell you a bit more about the website to, to show you sh some important things that you can find on the website. So I will try to switch try to switch uh, directly to the website. So I hope it's gonna work. Okay, I hope, I hope it's good. Yes. Uh, so this, this is the homepage and uh, you have seen it already in the presentation, but I would like to point out this webinar tab. So if you click on it, you will see a list of webinars that we are planning for you. Right now, uh, there are four webinars planned um, one will be focused on, on uh, information from scientists about how, how uh, uh, the scientists look at the, at the autumn change and how they use the data that they actually get from you. Uh, the webinar on October 19 will be about uh, working with autumn data. And uh, there will be one more webinar in mid-November that, that will be actually a place for you to share your uh, experience, to share your results, and to talk about cooperation in the campaign. Uh, here, through this webinar tab, we would also like to invite you to the, to the webinars of Trees Around the Globe campaign. So we will be adding Trees Around the Globe campaign webinars here. And you can also see archived uh, webinars. So here is the one that I've been talking about, the green down uh, data from the last year. You can, you can uh, download it or watch, watch the presentation. Uh, one more important part of the website is download materials tab, where uh, you can find not only the activities, but, but also link to e-training uh, about uh, green up and green down, link to protocols, and also some lesson plans that you can that are related to phenology and you can use them in your teaching. Uh, uh, one last one that I would like to point out is Get Inspired tab, where we collect experience from from schools. So by clicking on each of these pictures, you will you will download short presentation or short video that describes um, different approaches to campaign and different experience. Um, maybe I should, <laughs> maybe I should also uh, show uh, one more tab. Um, I hope we will not need it this autumn, but it might be that uh, yes. And this tab was created this spring because of the quarantine measures that didn't allow schools to go out and uh, observe their trees. So we try to collect uh, activities that that uh, could be done from home or at your garden just without, uh, you know, interfering with, with uh, other colleagues or other students. So we collected them here in case that uh, it will be needed. Uh, we will start adding more. So, but already now you can search here for, for uh, uh, experience and for um, some ideas what to do in case that you can go out. Well, uh, yeah, so it's, it's uh, all from me now. Thank you very much for listening and I will be happy to answer any of your questions.
I would like to ask, um, are there any criteria for choosing a tree? Uh, there, there, um, the campaign focuses on uh, seven tree species. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you, you can see. I will, I will not start sharing again. It would take time, but but uh, you can find them on on the campaign the website. website. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's not obligatory. It's just the, the purpose of, of focusing on several tree species is that these tree species are uh, growing all around Europe. So if you choose one of these uh, three species, you will have a good chance that there is another school observing the same tree and that you can exchange results or see results for other place. So uh, this is important. But yeah, if, if, you, if you choose another one, feel free to do it. Just the chance. Uh -huh. Sharing the, the tree should grow in a natural area. Yeah, that's, that's another thing. The mm -hmm. tree, ideally, the tree should grow in a natural area. It shouldn't be watered or fertilized. Mm -hmm. But of course, this is not always possible. It, it's uh, mm -hmm. yeah, most of us uh, or many of us live in the city, so often there are such things going on. Or also, the tree should be uh, in some distance from from a building, which is also sometimes very difficult to to uh, do. So you can also uh, observe such tree that doesn't meet all the requirements. But when you enter the data into the globe database, uh, please th there is a possibility to add note. So please note down that my tree is shaded by the building or my tree is being fertilized. So this is very important because it can influence the, the results that you get. The, the timing uh, of a greening down can be uh, different. And especially for a scientist, it's very important to know that this tree might um, have a little bit um, different results than, than the natural one. Thank you. Uh, I, maybe uh, there's one thing that I might uh, might have mentioned. I'm getting some questions. Uh, when, when you now choose a tree, if you should uh, register the tree somewhere. So uh, the answer is no, you don't have to register your tree now. You, you just, if, if you, uh, when, when you register, I ask you to write me which tree you are going to observe, but it's just for a purpose of information. But but you don't have to register right now. Uh, this kind of registering the tree comes with the activity tree when you start entering the data. So then you create a site and you you enter your tree, but you don't have to do it right now. You can wait for later on when you, when you collect the data. Uh, sorry, uh, where can we find a page where uh, will where, where will uh, be uh, this tree uh, registered on a globe database? But where? Uh, you can go to the globe visualization. You, you mean where you can see the? Where, where can we find uh, in globe database? Where can we find a page where we will uh, register our tree? Uh, you, you you need to go to the entering a data. You, you entering will, data, uh -huh. and, and then enter data, and then choose. Uh, there, I think it's called desktop forms. There, uh -huh. the you can enter data through the Globe Observer app or through the desktop. So, uh -huh. um, yeah, you you will you will find it on the main menu on the, on the Globe website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have okay. it. Shall I share the screen, or is it okay like this? And then. And where is the page where, where it will be registered exactly? Because there is some atmosphere, hydrosphere, biosphere, pedosphere, but I can't find uh, the, exactly the page where can we register our tree. Um, you will, you, you will, uh, Arbara, you wanted to? Yeah, so, so Martin, it's, it's under biosphere, the trees are under, under biosphere. Biosphere, uh -huh. and there is land cover. Greening. Yes, it's greening. It's greening. Greening. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Thank you. And plants. Uh huh. Yeah, I see it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, my apologies. I thought you wanted to know originally where you want, can see the like the results of what you entered. So 
this yeah, yeah, be, yeah. Uh, where can we register? Up? And where can we uh, set up uh, the, the the height of the tree and the type of the tree? Where is the page exactly on, on a global database? Yes, if, if you this is where you were going to the biosphere uh -huh. and and greenings, and then uh -huh. you will need to create a new new site new for the greening, uh -huh. yeah. and then in the site you will have an option to add tree. Yeah, I see it. It's a plants yes. and add plant. Yeah, yes, uh -huh. yes, yes, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll find it. Thank you. So are there any more questions? I don't. I, I look into the chat. Um, Brian was uh, writing that if you are. To take a tree height measurement of your trees, it is also important that you are able to see the base and the top of tree and be able to safely and legally access uh, or to walk walk to the base of the tree without any obstacles. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah, it's actually very important. It's also described in the activity, uh, and I'm sure that Brian will also talk more about it. Thank you for for the comment, Brian. And yeah, there's a link from Jen to in her picture. So um, if you would like to send pictures, you can find her an email address. Okay. And I don't see any more questions. So if there are not, I would like to ask Pavel to, to talk now about his experience uh, with cooperation with a school in, with partner school in Poland, in Bierun. I'm ready. Okay, so do you want to share your screen and show us the presentation? Yes. Share screen here. Yeah. You click on share screen and then you uh, need to choose uh, from the window. Uh, I, I don't see. Mm, window with pre with the presentation. You you have to have it open if you don't have the presentation. Yeah, I I see, uh, I see I see. Yeah, here it is. Yes. Sure. Perfect. Yeah, we can see. It can now. you see? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, uh, I'm Pavel Broža from primary school Otrokovice in Czech, in the Czech Republic. And uh, we are globe uh, six years uh, and we do phenology from school year 2016 to, and 2017. Uh, Two years ago, uh, we uh, we observed uh, in the European Phenology Study uh, our school birch and uh, Lenka. Uh, excuse me. Phone. Tak. Uh, I'm sorry. I Oh, okay, I'm ready. Uh, Lenka get together uh, our school with school, uh, primary school number one in Birun. Uh, their pupils lead, uh, let uh, Joanna Gavor, and we, uh, they observed uh, a birch two. As, as like we, and we uh, we do uh, greening. Oh. Uh, greening. Yeah. Uh, there is uh, there are our birch, uh, birches in Birun and Trokovice. Uh, in the Trokovice, we had two small birches, young birches. Uh, we, we do uh, 
phenology uh, measurements uh, like uh, uh, colors and uh, trees, uh, leaves colors, and uh, when uh, our birches uh, fall down, and uh, uh, the all measurements uh, what uh, globe need or want in the in the uh, for the protocols uh, green down but uh, because uh, we are uh, with my colleague from Poland school uh, we uh, we met together by Skype and uh, we uh, we agreed on the uh, collaboration then our pupils team uh, met by Skype too uh, they uh, they practice uh, their English language, uh, their speaking, uh, their communication. Uh, then uh, we no, the, we met uh, three times during the autumn campaign, and uh, we. Uh, we wrote uh, to the uh, do, do, do. To the to the discussions group on the uh, on the globe website as uh, show Lenka during this presentation today today's presentation and we <laughs> Uh, yeah, Otrakovice are on the east of the Czech Republic and Birun uh, are, is near uh, Czech uh, the Czech Republic Hranice. Uh, border. Border. Yeah, thank you. Uh, as you, as you can see, uh, our towns uh, is uh, relative near, uh, only 150 kilometers uh, by uh, uh, and we on the on the start we. Uh, uh, res respectively, respective uh, our pupils uh, uh, that uh, they our pupils uh, agreed on the uh, science questions question and uh, hypothesis. Uh, the question and hypothesis are on the, on the uh, presentation, as you can see. Uh, then we uh, agreed on postup. Postup. Lenko, jak se přesně řekne postup? You just agreed on how how you will do the jo, ha, observations, yes. how you will do that, right? Yeah, thank you, Bara. Uh, then uh, each of of, uh, of the teams uh, uh, take uh, photos of our birches and uh, observe obs observe uh, when uh, our birches uh, start uh, started leaves uh, falling down. Uh, when uh, how ch how change uh, the colors of 
our uh, colors of leaves on our birches. Uh, my my second team uh, measure measure measured uh, precipitation and uh, air temperatures because we we had a question uh, well, a hypothesis that uh, that the birch in the Birun uh, to fall asleep uh, later uh, because they they will have uh, lower temperatures and less rainfall uh, in compare with our birches in Otrokovice. Uh, at the end we uh, take our data uh, take our data as a color changes uh, and temperatures and precipitation, uh, we sent uh, these data to globe databases, the database, and uh, we export uh, these graphs. There is uh, leaf color changes, and there is uh, our uh, graph graphs from Otrokovice, graph from Otrokovice with daily average temperature, blue line, month average temperature and precipitation during uh, whole our observations. There, there is sim, uh, similar data from Bierun and uh, we, we, ob we observed that uh, precipitations and uh, average daily temp temperatures are very similar. Uh, it, it, it was a surprise for us because uh, our birches uh, start uh, with uh, leaf falling, falling leaves at uh, 3rd uh, October and uh, we and uh, we and stop no, we, the, and ending at uh, 4th December but uh, leaves in Bierun uh, in Bierun's birch uh, start uh, leaves falling uh, at middle November and ending at 2nd uh, December. Only 14 of 16 days, but uh, our birches, uh, they fall falling uh, almost uh, two months but but uh, precipitation and temperatures were, were very similar uh, we compare compared uh, our data oh first november back. we compared and uh, with uh, then uh, our teams get uh, got uh, took the data and uh, prepared this presentation and uh, finally uh, uh, my team from Otrokovice we uh, went to the globe games in the Czech Republic uh, especially in Kadaň in 2019 and we there presented our collaboration and our data on the Globe Games. Uh, uh, this presentation saw uh, a lot of teams from the Czech Republic, from the Czech Republic and 
others for each country Italy, Israel, and so on. Uh, from my side is everything, uh, is uh, all. If you can, some questions I can answer you. Thank you very much, Pavel. Thank you. Yeah, we're helping you, Anna. Good working. I'm going to have to supply her with She will. Okay, I think it was, wasn't a question. <laughs> or it was a question of a different type. <laughs> yeah, I would like to point out that, that uh, this is really great example of, of uh, research that Pavel just presented. It's uh, the two schools got together and they not only observed the, the change of, of trees, but they also measured the, these other things like uh, the temperature and rainfall, which is very good to do. If, if you have an uh, atmospheric uh, measurement site, you can do this. You can measure temperature and rainfall. Please do it because it will give you the, the whole picture about the conditions that your tree grows in. and it will actually give you much more information about its, its seasonal change. So this is very important to do. And also it's, it's uh, great that the two schools really planned the research together. They, they set the hypothesis and they followed some plan and, and tried to make the measurement so that they could compare it. So if you join the collaboration group, if you want to cooperate with someone, this, this is a very good way how to do it. So, uh, if there are any questions about it. So, if I, am, I, if I understand it, you will send us the contacts to collaborating schools uh, which you uh, choose for us? Yes, yes, exactly like that. I'm, uh -huh. I'm now collecting uh, the the request from the schools uh -huh. and uh, it takes a little time because many schools are still joining the collaboration group uh, yes. so uh, it's still people adding and adding yeah. so i'm trying to uh, find the best possible matches and i put the school together so that they always observe the same tree and if possible that the age of students is similar so that the students have more fun okay. yeah. uh, students yeah. usually yeah. from our experience they usually don't um, enjoy so much if they are 17 and they cooperate with uh, nine years old so not so much fun for them so I'm trying to find a similar age student and uh, yes in a few days I will send you a link uh, or uh, email to, to your yeah, partner. Yeah. And our objective is to share our photos with them. Yeah, yeah. you can uh, you can do many different things it's up to you yeah. and up to your time possibilities so you can share your pictures, you can share the results, or you can experiences even, and so on. Yeah, yeah. Or you can mm -hmm. even plan a research, such yeah, like yeah. Pavel, to to say mm -hmm. uh, that uh, you really want to uh, think about some hypotheses to to have some research question yeah. and work work yeah. on it. But Thank it is not necessary. You, you can start in a more you know uh, simple way, just just to get in touch. And uh, mm -hmm. for students, sometimes it's enough to start with uh, the fact that they have to call with someone over Skype. So it might be enough for the beginning. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. If there are no other questions, uh, uh, last moment. If, yes? if I can uh, tell, tell something. Uh, today, uh, I'm pleasure that uh, I and Joanna agreed on uh, continue our collaboration, collaboration, and we will observe the same uh, birches. Okay. We will continue, and uh, it's uh, good news for me. Uh -huh. Thank you for sharing with us, and we look forward to the results of your. Uh, next research so maybe hear them in the in the webinar in, in mid november okay so um, i would now uh, give word to brian campbell who will tell us about the trees around the globe campaign 
All right. All right. Well, thank you, Lenka, Bara, and Dana for um, allowing us to give a uh, short uh, presentation on what the Trees Around the Globe Student Research Campaign is and what we're envisioning for the uh, collaboration with the European Phenology Campaign. Um, I'm Brian Campbell, and I'm based at the NASA Wallace Flight Facility, and I'm the lead for the Trees Around the Globe Student Research Campaign. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a little introduction, and you know, we'll learn more throughout the year. You know, we'll work with the European Phenology Campaign um, to get a little more in depth uh, in the future. But uh, this is just kind of an overarching presentation. And then um, the co-lead for the campaign, uh, Peter Nelson, uh, as you introduced earlier, Lenka, will be presenting on some, you know, some online data tools and looking at the data and looking at, you know, uh, you know, trees and land cover and things like that from space. So. Here's our campaign team, and all of them are on this webinar right now. And it's uh, myself, Dorian Janney, Peter Nelson, Dr. Christopher Schumann, and Peter Falcon. And they're all in the chat. If you want to say hi to them, they're all there. Um, so quickly, you know, why we do the Trees Campaign, which is in the third year right now. We just started a third year uh, on the 1st of September, 2020. But uh, why is tree height so important? Why does NASA and the GLOBE program care about it? And basically, why are we asking people to measure it? Tree height is the most widely used indicator of an ecosystem's ability to grow trees. Tree height also allows you to track the growth of trees over time. And tree height observations can help researchers understand basically the carbon budget of our planet, how trees regulate you know, climate change and the carbon cycle. And NASA has missions and NASA National Aeronautics and Space Administration in the United States has missions and they work with, with countries all over the world to measure things like tree height from space and lots of other things you know. But we have some missions like ICESat-2, which I'll mention in a second, and uh, one called JEDI, um, who, who use onboard laser altimeter systems to measure the height of things on our planet, like trees and tree canopies, but lots of other stuff like ice, and landforms and uh, you know sea surface height things like that. So, um, but this is this is a really uh, important thing to measure the tree height. And always remember that you know when you're looking at trees, you're also looking at land cover because trees are a part of land cover. So they go hand in hand together. And as you know, Globe has the tree height measurement and has the land cover has the uh, the land cover observation and measurement protocol under the uh, you know the whole biosphere and uh, biometry portion of it this is just showing you the type of data that we get in and a lot of the data comes from you folks with the green up green down the majority of the green up green down is through the european phenology campaign but a lot of the people who are part of your campaign are part of our campaign as well so this is all the measurements that have come in in the first two years from um three different protocols actually four tree height land cover green up and green down As you can see there's you know, almost, you know, just over 52,000 observations coming in. So that's a lot of amazing data for, from the database that you can use for, you know, that students can use for research projects and that professional researchers like scientists can use in their research as well. So what we're doing this year with the TREES campaign is we're doing something called a scaffold structure where we're focusing on the science in the beginning and then we're focusing a majority of it on the student research, um, how to, you know, what, what the students can research using existing data and data they may collect when outside, whether it be tree height or green up, green down, land cover, things like that, and then presenting that research, not just uh, submitting to IVSS for the, the GLOBE program, but also presenting at different webinars, whether it be the Trees Around the GLOBE Student Research Campaign webinar or the European Phenology Campaign webinar. But we want to hear from the students because you're the ones who are taking the data uh, reviewing the data, analyzing the data, and doing research projects. So we have one big question that we have called the thematic overarching research question for our campaign. Why are or why aren't there trees in my local environment? And we understand that this is a really big question and a tough one to answer simply. So we came up with some smaller exploratory research questions that you can explore by looking at the globe data, looking at the data that you've collected or other citizen scientists and students have collected, you know, potentially from green up, green down, tree height, land cover, help explore those questions to answer this larger thematic overarching research question. So the protocols involved with our campaign are tree height, land cover, 
the greenings, green up, green down, which you are experts at, and the carbon cycle. When I say experts, as I mentioned, a lot of your data comes from the European, a lot of our data that we use as part of the campaign comes from the European Phenology Campaign. Our goal is to try to get more schools in the United States to do the green up, green down observations when they're doing tree height observations or land cover or even carbon cycle. So Peter's gonna to talk to you a little bit about the data and the tools and things. Um, I just wanna show you here quickly. These are the couple missions that I mentioned earlier. One's ISAT-2, the Ice Cloud and Land Elevation Satellite 2 that has been in space for two years and it's mapping our planet's height. And then we have one called JEDI, the Global Ecosystem Dynamics Investigation on the International Space Station, where it's also using a laser altimeter system. It's measuring the height of forest canopies, basically in the mid-latitude. So what we have here is a combination of the data that is coming in from campaigns and the GLOBE program, and then we have data coming in from space. And by combining that data, we have a really good uh, potential for, for a strong database of, of data for research, you know, uh, for research projects and for just analyzing the data. So our collaboration, what we're asking to do is basically when you're out taking a, taking a green up, green down measurement, go ahead and take a tree height measurement for the tree that you're focusing on. Because having that combination of the two will help, help um, you know, compared to satellite estimates of, you know, when a plant season, uh, uh, of the plant growing season may begin, you know, in locate by a particular location and identifying the genus and species. When we do the tree height observations, it's not required that you, that you identify the genus and species, but when you're doing the green up, green down protocols, that is a requirement to, you know, to look at that. And I know uh, in Europe, in the phenology campaign, you, you guys are focusing on specific uh, species of trees, which is great. And that's what we want to try to impart to the schools who are working with it in other countries you know, outside of Europe and, you know, in the United States. So comparing the ground-based and space-based data is super vital to helping us understand how accurate the measurements are. And this allows for student professional researchers to build the research. So when you're out taking the green up, green down observation, go ahead and take a tree height. It's super simple. And there's two ways you can basically do that for the GLOBE program. You have a handheld clinometer, and I have a picture of the clinometer here before you can, before you build it. And then we have some demo videos here, and you, there's a YouTube link here, and uh, you can check that out um, at any time. But then also we have the NASA Globe Observer Citizen Science app, where there's the trees tool, where you can go in and use your mobile device to measure the height of trees. And those are, that's just two ways you can do it. So I'm going to whip through this real fast and let Peter jump in. But here's some examples of some of the online data tools that we use to help compare the globe data that you're, that you're doing to some of the satellite data or instrument data that's in space right now. So um, you can learn more about the campaign here and uh, feel free to contact me at any time. Here's the URL to the, the Trees Around the Globe Student Research Campaign. And uh, here's my email address. And I will stop sharing now and pass it over to Peter Nelson. Well, perfect, Brian. Um, I appreciate that. I think it looks like I need uh, permission to share. And while I'm waiting for that permission, um, I want to take the, take the take the time to, um, you know, Peter. Uh, I, I think you have the permission already. Can you try it once again, please? Thank you. Okay. So one of the challenges that um, I have as a, as a scientist, as a, as a co lead for the Trees Around the Globe campaign, really is trying to understand trees um, that, and how we can actually measure them and see them from space. How we how we make this connection from the ground observations that students see that individual tree, and how does that work at this global level? So um, so in our Trees Around the Globe campaign and on our website, we've introduced a variety of satellite based tools to help students get that broader perspective. Um, and, and so I wanna just highlight a couple of these um, really quickly, just so that you can kind of get a sense for what's already available to you. 
Um, and, and importantly, in the globe visualization system here is a lot of, of, of really useful data or, um, that, that we um, highlight. And most importantly is you have this satellite data that actually gives you um, not only cloud cover, but how green is that location. So obviously, um, today we haven't made an observation on the western part of the hemisphere, um, but if we go back a day, we can actually see this satellite view. And we can start to understand this connection between um, climate and where trees are growing. So I really like to use, use this um, a lot um, to just start exploring where areas are green, where they're not, and, and, and the timing of when they might be green. The other... Uh, um, uh, tool inside, inside of the, just the globe visualization system here is actually um, what I spend a lot of my time doing, which is looking at the land cover photos. Now, um, we have now uh, through the Globe Observer a variety of ground photos that are coming in. Now, in the European Phenology campaign, you're using the Grow app to go through and to, to collect these, this data. Um, but as Brian mentioned, there's also the Globe Observer mobile app. App, which actually puts that data right into um, the GLOBE database. And, and one thing that we are, are really trying to get students to understand and think about is the different ways of measuring. What, do you get the same numbers if you use a handheld clinometer as you do um, um, a mobile device? And actually having them think about the measurements and what they're making. And so inside of here, we have tree photos, which are very similar to the um, uh, photos that are, that are being taken with the Grow app, except um, you have to make the animation, which is a great challenge for students to maybe take on instead of having it created for them. Um, pull up the tree photos, and if they do repeat photos of the same tree, they are doing the same kind of thing, except then it's in the GLOBE database. Um, and, uh, and the other one that I'll highlight is the, is the land cover photos. And this is another way that, that you can quickly, um, rapidly get some um, um, uh, um, uh, color photos, right? So we can see some areas that have, have that green vegetation at that time of year. And then how does that change? And so as you're thinking about comparing and contrasting locations, um, you might think about um, not only using the Grow app with this, but the Globe Observer app is a really valuable tool um, to get this, these photos. And I want to encourage you to maybe um, explore some of the photos that are in there and have your students actually um, look at the colors that are in there. And remember, that when you're doing these ground photos, you are actually doing remote sensing. You are measuring the light um, and the way that it reflects off of that. So um, all of that kind of sets us up to be able to actually connect back up to the greenness that NASA measures from space. And the European Space Agency also is doing the same thing with their satellites. And so there's this incredible tool that allows you to actually go in and um, click on a location. You can actually get um, the greenness value over there. And so students can actually start comparing their own measurements of greenness and the color of their leaves to what we're actually seeing from space. And the thing that I like about this is you can actually go in and you can start tra time traveling. And so the, for the very same date, which is an important thing when we're thinking about phenology and is it still green today as it was last year, being able to go back in time and look at these, um, at these data sets is an incredible, um, valuable resource for our students to be able to do because most of them don't have experience um, going back to say 2008 and what was the, what was the, um, how green was this area? How much has the trees grown? Um, and so, so, you know, the, this is, this, this greenness and this tool right here, NASA's worldview is a really valuable one because you can not only pull up this greenness value that allows you to compare and to be able to track um, potential uh, changing greenness, um, the timing, um, but also uh, uh, you can bring in other layers of information to help provide that context that can be really useful. And so, so we'll, we, we have some um, of these uh, tools and, um, and videos on our website that you can go and explore on the Trees Around the Globe campaign um, to help you to kind of understand um, the photosynthesis aspect of the leaf color and why do we actually care about tracking that leaf color.
Um, I'll just I'll mention here in Oregon, in the Western United States, we had these big wildfires that um, that happened, and you guys might be getting smoke now in Europe from them. Um, but as a result of that, um, our trees here in Oregon started changing colors a lot sooner than they normally would have. All of a sudden, they're turning yellow. Um, they're also um, getting smoke damage damaged. Um, and so this is going to be a really interesting research opportunity for us here in Oregon that we never would have anticipated. Um, and so, so just tracking the, the, the timing of that greening is going to be really interesting to help us understand the effects of wildfires that just occurred here. Um, and so, so I, I, I'm excited to be able to bring together these tools and, um, and maybe some more students here in the Western United States where we're focusing on um, a different type of oak tree. But um, I, I'm excited to, to be able to bring some of this to you guys. And so if you have any questions or, um, or, uh, or interest in, in, in exploring the satellite connection or making or taking the, the individual tree observations and putting it into a larger context, um, let me know. Um, we have a lot of, of data and, um, and this is kind of my role and expertise. And um, I'll end with this really exciting new global forest height canopy data set that just came out within the last month that helps us to actually again make this connection between uh, what's happening on the ground and those individual measurements but then using the satellite data to help us to understand all what's happening with trees around the globe so thank you guys so much for um, exploring the trees with us and I look forward to seeing what data everyone produces this year Thank you much, uh, very much, Peter, and also to you, Brian, for uh, introducing us these uh, interesting topics. And I'm sure it, it's uh, very quick. It was just a quick glimpse in, into both. So um, yeah, it, it is a pity we don't have much time to now to go into the depth. But there will be another webinar uh, coming soon where we'll, we will have more time to uh, discuss all these topics. And we will be very happy to hear more from you. And yeah, also, I, <laughs> I, Peter, I really hope that uh, your uh, interesting uh, research experience uh, will not take too long <laughs> and, and the fires will soon end. Um, yeah. Exactly. We have, we have great data for people to start making some comparisons to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, uh, are there any questions to Brian or to Peter? In the chat window, uh, I can see many interesting links from uh, from Brian and from Christ Christopher Schumann, uh, who is also a member of, of the Trees campaign. So you can look uh, into them and I will also uh, share them later on with you through the website so that you can uh, you can uh, enter them even if after the webinar ends. Okay. So I don't see any. I have, I have a question on behalf of, of the schools. Uh, Peter, the data, um, satellite data that you just showed, the, the NASA world view. So what, what is the condition for using that data? Is it like I can make a print screen of that? I can use it in my in a student presentation. Is that okay? Or is it like yes. free from NASA to do that? They, yes. Yes, that's exactly right. And that's always one of these challenges, right? Um, and so the first thing is citing the data, um, where you got it from, because this, it, the, um, this satellite data you'll find in a lot of different places. And so m mentioning that you got it through this worldview site rather than another NASA website or another tool that somebody created um, is 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 really useful and um, and and with that it is it, it, it we used it this summer with another group of students um, and they they really um, um, we had them explore their local area and so they went out and they they made their greening measurements over the summer um, but then they then they went to that website and they zoomed in on their location and the the nice thing is about that is you can, it's made for sharing because NASA likes this. And so you could, you, you know, you, this has a lot of tools, but you can actually share this link and actually share that out so you can share your view of the world today um, out to people. Um, the other thing is you can do this little screenshot 
And so this allows you to get a snapshot um, in a JPEG format, um, and you can even get a world file. So you can put it into a geographic information system or a mapping software. And so you can change the size here to actually be a 60 meter area or a 100 meter area, um, depending on the size of your research area. And you can click download and you actually get that data right from there. Now it's only a screenshot, it's not the actual numbers behind them, but it's a great place to start and to go along with um, uh, onto a student research poster or in a presentation about it. And you'll notice that, like I said, there's a lot of this other data that you can get here. You can also download data from inside of here um, with this. Um, and, and the other thing that I like about this is you can actually make this animation of, of greening over time. And so as you, as you want to inspire your students to think long term, um, you can actually go in here and you can make a little movie that animates the, the greening of an area over time. And so it really pulls together not only the satellite data, but some of the tools that students would want to use in some of their presentations. And, um, and so I found I find this, this, this tool to just be really useful as a, as a good exploration. Um, and in part because they, they give you over on the, on the left hand side, the actual um, uh, vegetation index numbers, kind of the greenness that goes along with it. And so we had a student this summer who went through, they just used this website and collected the number, the approximate number on the side, wrote it down, and they, they then um, look, they put together a time series trend of the greenness for their area just by using this tool and, and hand writing down these numbers. So that's one of the things that, that um, sometimes I get caught up into coding it or making it all fancy or some of these things, but just getting the numbers, um, the satellite numbers, um, gives, opens up new possibilities. And a relationship between what you're measuring and the satellite data is um, sometimes can be a stumbling block or a hurdle. Um, and so we don't want that to happen. And so, you know, let us know if there's a, a particular area or if you need somebody to, to, to make a presentation about um, how, to, how to do this a little bit more in depth with your student data. We're here to do that, and um, and that's something that I really like doing. So um, don't you know? Be inspired by some of these ideas, and let us know how we can help. Thank you, thank you for this. Yeah, it's good to show the example how, how they can use it for the poster presentation. Thanks. Yeah, it's it's for sure interesting um, idea, and also. Maybe uh, it could be an option to do what, what to do now if, uh, for example, in the Czech Republic, some schools are being closed uh, temporarily for uh, due to the COVID pandemic. So, yeah, this might be an idea what to do with your students in case that you can't really go out and observe your tree. You can use such online tools. Yeah, and Lenka, you know, not to extend this conversation even further, but that is one of the challenges that we all have. And I will mention remote sensing, satellite data, um, even, you know, going in and zooming in, we have some high resolution imagery that allows you to do a virtual transect. And so if you can't actually have a student go out and walk a 10 meter transect or, and to do the normal globe type of protocols, um, we are trying to come up with ways that we can use the satellite data to do a virtual transect um, and, and to do some similar sort of measurements in that way. Um, and that's been really successful for those for those students and, 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 and schools that aren't able to do the same type of thing on the ground. Remote sensing allows us to um, make measurements safely, whether it be a volcano or whether it be a fire or whether it be um, something like COVID. Um, and so, so I just, I think it, all of us thinking about this as a new way of maybe doing our science, um, I think gives us a, a, another opportunity to um, provide some real learning opportunities for students. So um, we have some high resolution imagery that we're actually doing that with. And so if there's anybody who's interested in, um, in making that connection and, and actually tr counting trees um, on, on, the, uh, on, those, on the satellite imagery, let us know. We can set up a project for you in your class and actually analyze your local area um, to complement those ground data that you might have. Thank you, Peter. And yeah, I really encourage you to 
to do it to contact uh, the trees, uh, Peter or the, the uh, trees around the globe campaign uh, team, and, and uh, in case that you want to do such research or want to use the information, so yeah, please go ahead and, and don't worry, contact, contact, uh, make a contact. <laughs> Okay, so we are a bit uh, over the time now. So um, please, if there are some last questions, go ahead and, and uh, ask or write. Uh, in the chat window, we are having some interesting, more interesting links. So uh, as I promised, I will share them later on with you. Okay, and there's a contact to Peter. I will also, um, if that's fine, share it uh, together with the, with the record of the webinar. Okay, so I don't see any more questions. So uh, I would like to thank you so much, Peter, Brian, and uh, Pavel for talking to us, for uh, presenting your research, and to all of you for being here with us. And, uh, taking your time to, to be here and listen to the presentation. And uh, we have a first autumn day tomorrow, so <laughs> have a good start of autumn and a nice autumn day and good luck for your observation. And in case you need to know anything about the campaign or uh, these topics, please uh, don't worry, let us know, send us an email. And if you can go out to observe your trees, make some nice uh, photos and videos for Jen and for the Globe Crawl program. So that we Thank can you. See you. <laughs> this is always one of the most photogenic projects of all, as you can imagine. So we love the pictures we've gotten in the past from the Europe and Eurasia phenology campaign. It's been, they've been the best. So... Mm -hmm.